this is the start of my series on free will. Um, and this is brought to you by Kyle Allender. So first, we need to understand something very important. Free will is not just making choices, okay? So there are actually many different views on how human beings make choices. No one doubts, again, no one doubts that humans make choices. The question we have that's before us today is whether or not we have control over those choices. And so there are many different views on how we make choices. This is kind of the basic breakdown. So the first view is, of course, libertarian free will, that minds are the first cause in a chain of events that will have an outcome and that there are no prior causes in that influence that choice. Then we have compatibilism, which is that minds have limited control over their choices, but are still highly influenced by prior causes. So this is kind of like, you know, in between determinism and um, free will. And then finally, we have hard determinism, which is that minds have no control over their actions and are completely determined by prior causes. So again, hard determinism, you would basically have no free will under hard determinism. So here's the first thing we're going to address, which is neuroscience. Neuroscience is something that we look into to discover what it tells us about the nature of free will and whether we have control over choices. This will be extremely important for when we look into the different interpretations of the Libet experiments. Because trust me, there have been a lot of objections to free will based on these type of experiments. We will then look into physics. Physics is something that will be explored and whether theories like quantum mechanics can, can actually give us intact insight into the nature of choices. This will be impor important for understanding causality and whether or not our choices do in fact have prior causes. Then finally, we have, which is the most important part, philosophy. Philosophy will be the aspect, and we will look into the aspect of choices and the initial probability of free will and which views actually carry the burden of proof given our initial intuitions. So it is important to remember that here we will be considering the prior probability of free will before we actually look at the evidence into which view of choices is correct. So what that means is basically is if a position has a lower prior probability, then it will carry a higher burden of proof than other views of how choices are. And so, for example, if hard determinism holds a higher burden of proof, then it, it requires more evidence than believing that humans do, in fact, have free will. Then finally, philosophy of mind will be also be discussed. Um, again, one view is philosophy of mind will affect how we see free will. An idealist, in an idealist or dualist view of the world, then it's more likely that free will exists in such a world, given that the mind is not produced by the brain in either of these views. However, if materialism is true, then it's more likely the case that humans either have no free will or is more akin to a compatibilist version of free will. Keep in mind, technically speaking, all views on the nature of choices are compatible with each of these positions, as even materialist philosophers like Daniel Dennett have proposed compatibilist versions of free will, and neuroscientists like Peter Tysey have proposed a libertarian version of free will under that's actually based on a materialist ontology. Again, these will be explored in a future video. And then what will, what will I myself be arguing in this series? So what I will be arguing is that given the evidence from neuroscience, philosophy, and physics, that it's most likely the case that humans do in fact have libertarian free will. I will consider the objections to free will from both the scientific and philosophical realms. This includes the Leibniz experiments and any question on whether or not our desires have any influences on our choices. I don't intend to prove that we do have free will, but rather I will instead argue that it's most likely the case that we do have free will. So again, that's just the basic outline. So that is the end of my video. Thank you for watching. Please share and subscribe and have a nice day.